When OpenAI releases a model, it stays released. GPT-4O, where O stands for Omni, is omnipresent in every AI forum at the moment. In this video, we will be also contributing to this community frenzy around GPT-4O and I will be showing you how you can access the API of GPT-4O from your local system in order to do text processing plus some of the vision capabilities of this amazing model. If you don't know what GPT-4O is, I already have done a couple of videos around GPT-4O where I go into way more detail about the architecture, capabilities, features and the whole background of it. Plus, I already did a video where I have compared this GPT-4O with the Llama 3. One of the things which I really like about GPT-4O is that it can handle a combination of text, audio and video inputs and can generate outputs in text, audio and image formats, not in video. Before GPT-4O, users could interact with ChatGPT using voice mode which operated with three separate models. GPT-4O will integrate these capabilities into a single model that's trained across text, vision and audio. This unified approach ensures that all inputs, whether they are text, visual or auditory, are processed cohesively by the same neural network. Currently, the API of GPT-4O supports text and image input only. You cannot input video, but there is a way of doing it and I will create another video around it. But in this one, I am just going to focus on text and vision, which is image primarily at the moment. And by the way, both of these modalities, text and image, are also supported by GPT-4 Turbo. But this one is way better than GPT-4 Turbo, not only in terms of quality, but also in terms of pricing. So this flagship model of OpenAI GPT-4O is as smart as GPT-4 Turbo, if not slightly better, but definitely much more efficient. It is 50% lower in pricing, which is amazing, a huge blessing for the developers. So GPT-4O is 50% cheaper than GPT-4 Turbo across both input tokens and output tokens. For input tokens, it only charges $5 US per 1 million tokens and $15 per 1 million tokens for output. For my liking, it's still a bit expensive, but as we know that it takes a lot of grunt to run these things. But still, I believe it is on the expensive side. Anyway, another cool thing about this GPT-4O in terms of API calling is that it is two times faster than GPT-4 Turbo in terms of latency. And the best thing is that it has five times higher rate limits. If you have been watching my videos where I have been playing around with GPT-4 Turbo when we are creating a data set or we are just calling the APIs again and again, at times I hit the rate limits. And then we have to wait or we have to do some sort of python um, handling where we have to control or throttle the api calls and that is where this gpt4o gives much needed breather where it has five times higher rate limits but it is not available yet to be fair but as per open ai they say that in the coming weeks it will be available and we could have even up to 10 million tokens per minute for developers which is good, really amazing. As I mentioned earlier, GPT-4O in the API currently supports text and vision capabilities. It has better vision capabilities and improved support for non-English languages compared to GPT-4 Turbo. It has a 128K context window and has a knowledge cutoff date of October 2023. And OpenAI also has planned to launch support for GPT-4O's new audio and video capabilities in the API to uh, initially small group of partners and then later for the general public. Okay, so that's the intro of this. Let's get right into it and see how it works. So I will be taking you to my local VS Code editor. So this is my VS Code editor. One thing you would need to do before you start, first you would need to install or upgrade your OpenAI API. So for that, simply go to your terminal, whether you are using Linux, Windows or whatever. I'm using Windows, so I will be doing pip install, upgrade OpenAI and in the quiet mode, it is going to upgrade my 
open ai to the latest version because if you are using the previous version it's, it's not aware of dpt 40 so it is imperative that you do that so that is done second thing you need to do is to make sure that you go to platform.openai.com and from there you get your open ai's api key this one and you set it in your environment and that, that is a paid option i would suggest that just throw in ten dollars in it and it should give you an api key i already have set it in my environment now let me walk you through the code so this is a code this first code what it is doing it it is doing the text processing i'm simply importing open ai's library and then i'm import i'm just specifying that G model is gpt 40 i am getting my key from the environment and then i am instantiating open ai's client in python and then i'm just using simple completion api now there are two roles we need to assign and this is a standard by the way system is what directs the ai or the model that what exactly we are expecting it to do so we are telling it that you are a helpful assistant help me with my investment portfolio and of course you can replace it but but with whatever you wanted to do and then this is the user content which is your question which model will respond to and in that one i'm just asking it i want to invest in an index fund but market is overvalued should i wait for a bear market or should i just throw in the money so let's see what model says here let me run this and hopefully i will be in the same directory so i'm going to run this script it has returned the response let me make it a bit bigger okay so look at the response here it says investing in an index fund or any other investment requires careful consideration of goals and all that stuff dollar cost cost averaging rather than investing all your money at once you can invest a fixed amount at regular intervals okay so market vol um, volatility and all that stuff what are the pros reduces the risk of investing a lump sum at market peak and that is good con may result in slightly higher average purchase prices that is a very very good advice and lump sum investing pros are historically market tend to go up over long period the risk is that short term if the market is overvalued and correction happens soon after you invest this is going to what happen whenever i uh, do that so i think um, if i just put everything in this is going to happen so if the market goes down you know who to blame okay then market timing and then what are the pros can result in significant gains and cons very difficult that is true and then it is talking about consideration for decision making if you have a long time horizon 10 plus years the specific timing of your investment is less critical risk tolerance that is very nice if market volatility makes you uncomfortable dollar cost averaging is good research and opinion that is nice and then personal financial situation and then the last recommendation is uh, long term horizon lean to a dollar cost averaging if you're concerned about current valuation amazing lump sum if confident um, and then hybrid approach that is also good 50 percent in this and consult with financial advisor to tailor these strategies i don't agree with that why pay a financial advisor when we have chat gpt and plus um, you know anyway that is just uh, i don't think so they add any value financial advisor except their you know fees anyway so all in all really good advice but more than that look at the response how good that response is so this is how you do the text processing now let me show you how you can do the image processing so this is a code another uh, python file on my local system where i'm again using gpt4 with my open ai key and then i am just giving this image let me quickly show you that image and then i will go from there let me open it in my browser quickly so this is an image this is just a youtube thumbnail from one of my video so i'm going to just ask it to describe this image okay so let's go back to my vs code and then so this is the image path on my local system by the way you can also specify a url here if you like and then i am just encoding the image because that needs an encoding in base 64 and then simply i am using the same system prompt and i am telling it to help me with this image and then describe my question is to describe the image 
and this is the local path and then temperature which determines the randomness or creativity of the model is zero if i set it to one every time i run it it will it will be very non-deterministic and it is going to me give me a different response so let me clear the screen and then let me run this vision code so let me press enter here there you go it has returned me the response so let me make it slightly bigger and if i scroll up you will see it is saying that sorry there you go so the image the image appears to be a promotional graphic for a software product name noromedias that is correct the text on the image is this yeah absolutely spot on and then there are two visual elements a group of animated characters yeah there are enemy style characters all dressed in made outfit that is true and then a person pointing and you know amazing stuff the background is predominantly black and with the text in red and yellow and amazing amazing response as you can already see uh, just to refresh your memory maybe i will just quickly show you the image again can you see the image or not and you can't let me make sure that that is displayed in the browser how about that yeah i think now you can see it so this is the image again and this is the vs vs code and you can see the response is amazing by the model i will put this code in my blog and i will drop the link in the video's description play around with it let me know how you go if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching